In this video, we're going to look at some examples where we use the properties of the definite integral. So let's go through a quick review. Our first property was that if we had the definite integral of a constant function, so f of x equals k, from a to b, we could evaluate that as k in parentheses, b minus a. And all that is really is base times height. The base of our rectangle is the b minus a, and the height is going to be the value of the function. And if the value is negative, it still makes sense because then the area would be below the x-axis. Our properties involving the bounds of integration, if the bounds if the upper bound and the lower bound are the same, then the value of the integral is zero. I can break up an integral into two parts. If I choose a number which is between the lower bound and the upper bound, then I can write that integral from a to b as the sum of two integrals, a to c, and then from c to b. And finally, if I interchange or swap the boundaries of integration, the impact on the value of the integral is to change the sign. Our algebraic properties, we found out that we can factor a constant multiplier out of an integral. The integral of a sum is just the sum of the integrals, and the integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals. And we had our symmetry properties. If we have a symmetric function, if we have an even function and our bounds have opposite values, then if it's even, we can evaluate the integral from negative a to a, f of x dx by just finding the value to the right of the x-axis and multiplying it by two. With an odd function, it's even easier because the area to on one side is above the x-axis, and the area on the other side is below the x-axis, and those areas are the same. And so um, the one above is counted as positive, the one below is negative, they add up to zero. So here I am given a piecewise defined function. It consists of line segments and, and one portion it's a semicircle, uh, and we're going to answer some questions about definite integrals with this function. So in part A, I'm asked to evaluate the definite integral from negative 2 to 0 of f of x dx. So from negative 2 to 0, the graph of f of x is just this line segment, and so the definite integral would just be the area under that line segment. And so I would just calculate the area of the triangle. The base is 2, the height is 6. And so if I take 1 half times 2 times 6, I get 6. Part B, I'm going to go uh, and calculate the definite integral from 1 to 2 f of x dx. From 1 to 2, f of x is another line segment, but it lies below the x-axis. So when I calculate this area, I count it as being negative. And so it is just a triangle, one half base times height, but negative because it is below the x-axis. So now it's the value of the definite integral is negative one half. In part C, I'm evaluating the definite integral from 7 to 8 of 5 times f of x dx. So 5 is a constant multiplier, so we'll use the constant multiplier rule and factor the 5 out of the integral. Now the integral that's left over is just the area between the curve and the x-axis between 7 and 8, which is another triangle. And so I'll just calculate the area of that triangle and multiply it by 5 to get 15 over 2 as my final answer. 
part D, I want the definite integral from zero to two of f of x. And there's two different line segments uh, from, there's one line segment from zero to one and the other one from one to zero, I'm sorry, from one to two. And um, the portion from zero to one is above the x-axis, the portion from one to two is below the x-axis. So it's natural that I, I want to break this into two integrals. One integral that goes from zero to one and the other integral that goes from one to two and calculate their values. So the triangle from zero to one is just one half times one times two. And we already calculated the uh, value of the integral from one to two f of x dx, that's in part b. We found that to be negative one half. So we work that out and we get one half as our final answer. In part e, we're gonna calculate the area between the semicircle and the x-axis. So note that it's not just the area of the semicircle, it's the area between the semicircle and the x-axis. And so uh, we really have two parts. We have the rectangle and we have the semicircle. So we calculate the area of the rectangle. It's just uh, base times height or length times width. And a semicircle will be half pi r squared for its area. So altogether then I get 12 plus two pi. I can't combine those. I'm just going to leave those as they are. That's my exact value and that's what I want to have. All right, in part F, we are calculating the integral from six to eight of two plus F of X. So we actually have a constant being added to f of x. So I can't factor that out. I can only factor out multiplicative constants. So there's two ways I could go about this. One thing I could do is I could take the graph of f of x, which is just this blue line segment between x equals 6 and x equals 8 and shift it up by two, and then calculate the area under that shifted line segment. But that's really the same as breaking this up into two integrals. I can use the uh, summation rule, the addition rule, and break it up into two integrals. And then our very first property says, oh, well, this is just a constant. So uh, with a constant, I know how to evaluate the definite integral of a constant function. And I can evaluate the definite integral of the other part just using the original graph. So either way you go about it, you're going to have uh, two parts and so the first part, I'm using our first property. This is just going to be 2 times, in parentheses, 8 minus 6. That's the definite integral of the constant. And then the definite integral of f of x between 6 and 8 is just the area of this shaded triangle. And in the end, you get the same answer of 10. And in our last part of this first example, we're asked to evaluate the integral from one to zero of f of x dx. Now between one and zero, uh, we have a line segment representing the graph of f of x, but notice that the upper bound is smaller than the lower bound. And so, we're going to have to swap those bounds and change the sign. Right. So if I swap the bounds, now I'm going from zero to one. And 
I just have to remember to change the sign. So now it's going to be a negative. So I can find the area of this triangle, but the value of the integral is going to be negative because the original integral had the lower bound being larger than the upper bound. In our next examples, we're going to use the geometric interpretation of the definite integral. Geometric interpretation just means the signed area and the properties of the definite integral to evaluate. Well, in our first uh, integral, we have the definite integral from negative 5 to positive 5 of x minus radical 25 minus x squared dx. So I'm going to break that up using my difference or subtraction rule. And um, my first integral now has an integrand, which is an odd function. So that's going to help. But what about this second integral over here? I have radical 25 minus x squared. Well, let's write it over here in the margin. I have y equals radical 25 minus x squared. Let's go ahead and square both sides. Now I have y squared equals 25 minus x squared. And if I add x squared to both sides, I get x squared plus y squared equals 25. And I should recognize this equation. This is the equation of a circle. It's centered at the origin, and the radius is 5. Now, going back to the original integrand, y equals radical 25 minus x squared, that's only the upper portion of the circle, the upper half. So really what I have here is a semicircle. And so the definite integral of that semicircle would be the area under the semicircle, between negative 5 and 5. So that would be the entire semicircle. And I know how to calculate that area. So going back to our odd function, remember we have to have opposites as our bounds in order to use the uh, properties of the odd function uh, to take advantage of an odd function. And then I know that in that case, when I have opposites and an odd function as an integrand, the value of the integral is zero. And then uh, the area of the semicircle is just one half pi r squared. And that simplifies to 25 pi over 2. Let's evaluate the next example. We we'll have the definite integral from negative pi to positive pi of x squared tangent of x dx. So whenever I see bounds of integration which are opposites, I definitely want to check to see if I have any symmetry in the integrand. And sure enough, in this case, uh, the integrand is an odd function. Remember that x squared is an even function, but it's multiplied by tangent of x. Tangent of x is an odd function. So an even function times an odd function will result in an odd function. So I have an odd function, and my bounds are opposites of each other. So the value of the definite integral is 0. So in our last example, we're given the sum of three integrals. And they all have the same integrand. It doesn't matter uh, what the integrand is. It's just some function, f of x. Um, and we'd like to be able to put them together, write these as a single integral. So the first thing I notice is that in the first two integrals, the first integral goes from 3 to 5, and the second one goes from 5 to 8. So I should be able to combine those as a 
single integral from 3 to 8. And the last integral, I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to copy it down. So I'll have the integral from 3 to 8 of f of x dx plus the integral from 4 to 3 f of x dx. So I haven't done anything with the last integral yet, but I do notice that the lower bound is bigger than the upper bound. So I'm going to swap those bounds and I'm going to change the sign from plus to minus. So now I can see that I go from 3 to 4. Well, 4 is between 3 and 8. So I could break up my first integral at the boundary 4. So I'll write that as the integral from 3 to 4, f of x dx, plus the integral from 4 to 8, f of x dx. And then I have to subtract off the integral from 3 to 4, f of x dx. And so that integral is going to add out with the first integral, or add to make 0. And I'm left with the integral from 4 to 8, f of x dx.